this is the conclusion of the third round table between Cabinet and, uh, and KEPSA, which is really a testament of the consultative nature and the participatory nature that has been adopted by the government of Kenya in meeting all the different stakeholders because we recognize that together as a community, we have ideas and solutions that we should be able to harness as we take the country forward. We have demonstrated from the government side that all the issues that KEPSA has been raising have been addressed, even if they are recent ones. Uh, the recent one, of course, being the impact of the war in Russia and Ukraine, the impact on food, the impact on fuel, the impact on fertilizer. And already within government, we have started to address that. And some of them have has already been announced. Say, for instance, the fertilizer subsidy. The ministers of finance in East Africa have addressed the matters of access to critical items in the region and have already made decision during their pre-budget consultation. So nothing really uh, catches us uh, by surprise. On the matters around energy, we've also demonstrated the work that has been undertaken in energy reforms and the, uh, and the impact of the same. On the matters around uh, election preparedness, uh, the teams and our national teams from security were present in this meeting and have outlined all the different measures to ensure that we do have uh, peace and, I mean, and an ecosystem of peace around our elections. I think the challenge that has been given to the private sector is that they also need to take this responsibility amongst themselves and as they engage with political leaders to ensure that they pass the same message of respect for national institutions and respect for processes that are used for dealing with grievances around outcomes, whether it's an, as an MCA, as a member of parliament, as a governor, or as a presidential candidate. They are, the, the, the laws in the country are robust enough to be able to handle any grievances and they must be utilized rather than uh, resorting to other unlawful means. Some of the outcomes that came out today, one, the government is keenly observing the microeconomic stability, looking at unemployment, balance of payment, <coughs> and interest rates, and exchange rates to ensure that the private sector continues to have an environment under which it operates. There's a committee in government to address the medium, long-term, and short-term effects of the Ukraine-Russia war, and, and the recommendations of the committee by P.S. Muya of Treasury uh, will be shared soon. The government is taking into consideration all the uh, externalities to ensure a sustainable response as Kenya. The government has made sure that there's enough funding available for elections to propel the, the transparency and credibility of the elections. The government is looking at a national tax policy to ensure the certainty on ta in tax and the medium term revenue projections. The government has challenged the private sector to task the next administration to continue with the digitization in the land sector and to continue with the reforms that are going on there. And the government has injected about 10 billion Kenya shillings in the rehabilitation of the mid of the of the of the gauge railway, the, the one gauge railway, MGR, from Naivasha, medium gauge railway from Naivasha to Malaba, and also convinced Uganda to do an MGR upgrade from Malaba to Kampala, which is about 360 kilometers. This will ensure seamless connectivity. The Kenya police has its, its disposal many trained units to manage any insecurities, threats in the country over the election period and support the IBC to conduct the elections and the sectors, whether it's the health workers, whether it's the teachers and all that. So all those will be supported through that period so that there are, there are no eventualities. The government has assured that there's sufficient connectivity in the country, which is now at 96.4% coverage. The government has also put in place the right infrastructure to manage social, social media engagements, cybercrime and fake news. Further, the government has assured that there's no fear on the elections being rigged, adding that necessary laws are in place already govern and and already governing all and ensure that there is no fear on the election being rigged. We've also discussed about um Kenya Daima and how we continue to partner with government on the initiatives of the um Kenya Daima to ensure that there is peace and a peaceful transition. What we are challenging all Kenyans is Chagua, Kagua Kabla ya Kuchagua. Please evaluate your leaders before you elect them. 
We know the governing questions around this election is anti-corruption and the economy. And so this is what we are challenging Kenyans and that we also, as a media, we propel uh, the information, the facts, so that Kenyans have all the information that we need. There's calmness in the country and that will continue pre and post election. And we in the private sector will continue to partner with government to ensure that there's a smooth transition and that peace reigns in the country. And wherever there are issues that they will be transmitted to judiciary. We've already met with judiciary four times since CS, uh, uh, CJ Kome took office. And again, we're continuing to monitor that on whatever uh, is needed around those areas. We've met with the IEBC, NCIC, IPOA, and others who are charged with elections. And we'll continue to meet with them in the next two months. The hallmark of President Kenyatta's administration has been constant consultation, collaboration and cooperation with all players uh, in our country, whether it's players in the economy, uh, and that the president has espoused the philosophy that we are all stakeholders in the future of our country. And our continued conversations, such as we are having with the private sector today, uh, have been part and parcel of how we move forward. We've had a fantastic time with the private sector, and on my own behalf and on behalf of my colleagues in government, I would like to thank them very sincerely, reflecting on how we work together with the private sector in the war against COVID-19, how we have worked together with them when we have our challenges of one kind or the other, and now we are going to work together to confront whatever challenges we have to deal with in the lead up to the general elections, including uh, you know, food prices, the cost of fuel, and so on, and moving goods and services across the country. So we are at a good place uh, because of the decisions we have made and the counsel we have received from our colleagues in the private sector. Uh, mine is to assure everyone, uh, again, on behalf of the executive branch of government, that our country is secure and safe and that we are ready to support the IEBC to conduct the general elections, that no one needs to worry about anything. I have just asked this morning the private sector colleagues to continue making their orders, to continue making their business plans, expanding their businesses, because our country is secure and our country is safe. We will have a peaceful elections. We have no evidence whatsoever from across the country because we are engaging on a daily basis. Sometimes we have come to a point of engaging almost on an hourly basis with the structures of administration and security across the country. We have no evidence at all that we are going to have any problem of any kind. We ask our brothers and sisters who are on the campaign trail, who are seeking leadership, to remember their citizenship responsibility and duty. This is our only home on earth. Uh, let us not incite anyone and let's be here. Kenya is here today. We have only been given a responsibility to run the affairs of the country now. Kenya will always be here, you know, today, tomorrow and always. Let's make sure that we keep our country safe and we are all ambassadors of peace. Already NCIC have a peace charter and so does IEBC. So we're seeing how to work together and have one document that we get all the presidential candidates, governors and other, other uh, front, uh, other office um, candidates to sign into that at, around peace and how they're going to uh, lead their campaigns. Uh, we don't have any businesses that are withholding any investments so far, and that's what we'd like to see going in the next two months as we go into elections and beyond that so that we can keep the jobs. We all know that we are recovering from COVID, and so any job matters right now more than ever, and so we would like to do that. And so we're encouraging the politicians, we're encouraging media as you report that uh, we keep the same uh, environment of calmness, of peace, and um, and we'll be able to be able to move forward together. When you have any competition, there'll always be a winner and a loser. So the most important thing, and that is what we are asking, is can we always follow the rule of law? So let's say um, somebody is aggrieved, whether I was elected or not, or given a, given what position I was, can we use the channels that are there? And that is why you're hearing us, Kepsa. We have met the judiciary, like you've heard four times just to make sure that when, when you are aggrieved, there is a process. Mm -hmm. We have met IBC to make that process clear so that we reduce as many um, areas of conflict that, that is possible. Of course, to the, to the soldier down there, we've also tried to do, well, there's the Mkenya Daima, which um, Dr. Vimal will talk about. So I believe if you sort of just manage the areas that bring conflict, which is a loser or um, somebody not feeling fairness, that is where we feel we're going to get, make a difference. It's not just Kepsa, right? Kepsa is inspiration, but it's not just Kepsa. It's the religious bodies, it's the civil society, it's the private sector, it's the youth and the women groups. 
And it's also the media coming together. We're all coming together to say, all non-state actors, right? Coming together to say, let's look at this election and see what it is. And ultimately, it comes back to you and me. In fact, every one of you reporters, every one of you journalists, everyone in this country needs to look at it and say, fine, what is my responsibility? It is my Kenya. And it's not about just saying, mimini wanainchi. It's about mimini wanainchi. And everybody feels it that way, number one. Number two, it's to do with kagua um, belea kuchagua. Why are we saying this? Because you should see who is my leader at MCA level, at county governor level, at MP level, and at that local level where I'm really going to be impacted. And from there you go forward and say, fine, who's the leader for the country? And of course, who's the senator? So ultimately, it comes back to all of us saying, Nitatenda Wajibuwangu, right? What is Wajibuwangu? Wajibuwangu is our responsibility, not Hakietu. In the past, we've always had Hakietu, Hakietu. It's a matter of Sarkali and we all demand. Now it is you and me. What is our responsibility? Can we bring it back home? My responsibility as a citizen of Kenya and a owner of Kenya, partially, is to say, what am I looking at? And that's what is important for everyone. We're non-partisan totally. Choose whoever you want. But at the same time, make sure that the person you bring in after August 10th, 11th, 12th, or whenever the results are announced and accepted, whoever comes into power, are they the people who will take us forward going forward in the next 5, 10 years? If there are 12,000 candidates going and vying for seats, there are probably only 1,800 vacancies. So you'll have 10,200 who are going to lose the election. Are they, are they the ones who concede defeat and say, yeah, we accept? Or are they ones who go to go to public op court of public opinion and start bashing each other and saying, I was disgruntled? Because everybody has an ego that I'm the winner. There's nothing wrong with that. I think that's the point of behavior. So now at that time, me as Mwanaenji, me, me as, as Wajibuwangu, is it to go back and fight and say, because I, my leader says fight, is it that? Or should we say, there is a whole system for justice, right? Go back to the courts, go and fight your case out there, and then see who is the real winner. And go back with evidence. That's all we're saying. And that's where, if we all, as citizens of Kenya, 50 or 55 million as we are right now, start saying, we will stand together and we will not be di divided. That's important. So, to the media, I would say one thing. We wanted assurances even today to say, are we okay in terms of the agencies handling security and peace? And we've been assured in no uncertain terms that they are more than prepared to make things up. We've not seen capital flight because of elections. No one has said they're leaving the country because it's an election period. We've not seen anyone saying they're moving their business from one region to another because it's election period. And we are hoping the next two months we will not see that. Uh, the last two elections were fortunate we did not see that. I think um, we know as Kenyans, we are... We know what happened in 2007, and so sometimes we base today from 2007. It's good for us not to forget that, but it's also good to see the changes that have happened over time. And what we got today from the security agencies, from the CSAs, is that uh, because of lessons learned in previous elections, they have put certain different measures, and that's the reason why we are seeing the calmness in the country. That's the reason why we're not seeing capital flight. No one is leaving. If they're leaving the country, they're leaving for other reasons, not because it's elections. Our GDP does not decline like it used to. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we are becoming democratically mature and uh, separating the economics and the, and, and the politics. So let the politicians do the politics. Let us do our economy. And the fact that we can continuously engage and ask them the questions like we did this morning, ask IEBC and speak to judiciary. I believe this is this, um, they're calling it a whole government approach. This is what is actually leading to the democratic maturity that we are seeing in Kenya today. I think some of the measures that the, the government shared with us, and there are many more, and maybe what I can mention here is that um, it's their response speed. Uh, then they have made sure that they have their security agencies. They are working, as, as, uh, as Flora said, it's a whole government approach. So it's not, uh, government is not working in silos. And so government, um, in terms of, in the different regions, everyone, everyone in government is in the same place. So if there's anything to discuss, if there's information to be shared, they're all sharing together. And so the response is much faster, it's much quicker. They're also working with the Nyumbakumis, the community leaders, so that there's assurance, there's information sharing, there's response. And I think we can attest to that. When we've heard of a crime, now it's not like before. You know, we've seen government move very fast, and it's because of that one government approach, and that gives such assurance to business. They've actually 
told us that they managed to quash a lot of, of, of what would be have, you know, um, violent issues or, or, or a lot of unpleasantries. I mean, he was saying the issues in 2017 by now is, has reduced by, a, by two thirds. So they're only dealing with one third vis-a-vis -vis that time. Why? Because they're using a lot more information, they're closer, they're more prepared, they've mapped out, they know what could be hotspots, and they've put in resources. I mean, they told us they bought over 2,000 vehicles to actually move around. They, they, um, they've put in enough um, security officers. They've equipped themselves quickly to deal with issues. When people are in election mode, crime goes up. So when there's light, darkness does not have a place to hide. So they're doing the lighting in, in different roads and in different places. And they're also ensuring that uh, our border borders are also registered because they're also a good resource to work with us and work with government in terms of responses, in terms of information. And so that's all, that, that's all is in the process. It's not that they're going to begin, it's already in the process. Ultimately, I think the issue is around what is me and you? What is our, our responsibility? So as a person sitting in a county or a sub-county, what's my responsibility? I know what's happening, inform them and let them know that there's something going on here and therefore let's get it out. So I think that's important where feedback goes back and right and I think what Carol just now said is responsiveness their responsiveness is important not to say that you go to a police station you're harassed I think that's where the, the, the reflection comes in and that's all that preparedness is what we wanted conference about will there be issues there will be small localized issues yes possible but the question is can they respond to it do they have the ability we've been assured today that yes there is we've actually come out of a two-year period of uh, COVID and I think the COVID era was a defining moment for Kenya and for the world Right? And that was a worse situation economically. So that we've come through a real a huge gap. Elections is not going to be a difficult thing to handle compared to COVID, right? Because that was something that was out of control. But then what we've got now with the Russia-Ukraine war is imported inflation. We've got imported issues coming out, supply chain issues globally. And that's a far bigger issue to look at and contend with rather than just elections. So I'm just saying elections should be less of a worry for anybody here. It should be more about the global economy, it should be more about where it's happening in the global area. I'd put it differently now as an investor too, is to say today Kenya and Africa is far more interesting than it ever was because Europe is not that attractive because of the Putin factor. So I would just say that we have a lot more inquiries coming through, a lot more people asking and can I come and be located in Kenya? Yes, some people who are now coming in new will say we'll wait for the election and we'll decide after that. But there's a lot of discussion going on. It's not like it's the end of the world. So I think that's important. Number two, ideologically, all the political parties standing are still in for jobs, still in for economy, and still talking about how to expand the business. So none of them is talking that we shall take over and shall be a communist country. So I think that's a least of a worry. And I think on this basis from now, the confidence that people are getting is far bigger and better. And therefore, boardroom conversations will now be about what next and about economy, and about solar, it's about climate change. It's much bigger issues than just an election. We hardly stay a month without a delegation from a foreign country that is coming into this country to look at investment opportunities. Just last week, even small countries like Slovak mm. brought a delegation looking into investments. We had a big one, the Japanese sec uh, second uh, economy uh, conference, just the other about two, three weeks ago. Again, so that tells you that investors are not worried about elections. And that's the reason why we needed to make sure that we have all the information we who deal with the investors every day so that as we're engaging them, we're sharing with them the security information, we're sh we giving them the comfort, but we had to meet with government to get that comfort ourselves to be able to do that with government. Every day, I'm working with even local investors who need something in government sorted out on their investment. They're not saying they have closed their investment. All they're saying, I need this done in this uh, by cabs, I need this done at the port. That tells you business is moving. Mm -hmm.